first of all, let me honor the set man of the house. Sometimes this is some of the things that happen when you are, you know, into that realm. We have the realm, we call it godly realm. Do you know that? Yes. Do you know that everything that we are praying for is already released in the godly realm? The issue is not the godly realm. The issue is the spiritual realm. It's two different realms. Now, the godly realms is the children of God that have access. The spiritual realm is everybody that is spiritual. It doesn't matter. You can be a witch, a wizard, or courtism. You, as far as you know how to have access in the realm, you can have access. And that realm is the most dangerous realm. That realm is the strongest that we. Are you here? Now, if you are not strong in that realm, you can never win. So, for example, what God has released to you, now it comes to that realm. And when it comes to that realm, and your connection is not correct, you are not strong. I'm about to teach you something. You can pray from January to December. The manifestation will not be there. Daniel prayed three times a day, right? When Daniel had the revelation about what God was going to do, Daniel was in fasting, isn't it? Even the king brought some laws that whoever is seen prayed to any other God, that the God of the king, they will be in trouble, isn't it? Daniel was so faithful to prayer three times a day. Powerful man. How come the prince of Persia could stop a prayerful man's answer? Angel, there is something called spiritual realm. Let me honor the set man of the house. Let us celebrate him. The apostle. Hallelujah. Scott. And the woman of God. Can we celebrate her too? Amen. And all the men of God online and in-house. And be so calm. Let's celebrate this man. Listen. This, this man has a heart of gold. And the heart of God. Do you know that the scripture talks about two types of hearts? I have too much revelation. I don't have, know where to start. Yes, the Bible talks about two types of heart. A heart of God and a heart of dog. Yeah. Do you know Jesus said that don't give nothing to those with the heart of dog. If not, they will do what? They will trample and destroy it. And they will turn back to what? Fight you. There are two. Jesus warned us never... To give anything to those with the heart of dogs. So if you check Jesus correctly, he was always dealing harshly with those, to, with them that have what? The heart of dogs. He called uh, uh, Herod what? An animal. And it was against what? Jewish law. Now let's enter into the realm of God. What is the realm of God? The realm of God is the word of God. Do you know that? Because the word of God is God himself. Amen? Amen. Are you here? Yes. Am I confusing you? Tell your neighbor, relax. It will make sense very soon. Or oh, the way you are saying, it looks like you are falling asleep. Amen? Let's enter into the word of God very quick. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah. I want to show you something. This is not what I'm talking about. For the three days I have, I'm going to talk about how to operate in the realm of God. Amen? Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Oh, media team, I think my thing is not working. No. The internet is not working. One minute. One minute. Isaiah 52. The verse number three. The screen 
Okay. Are you there? Isaiah 52, the verse number 3. Okay, I see it. Now it says, For thus says the Lord, to who? Isaiah. Who was Isaiah? Prophet, right? Don't worry, we are taking it slow. So God spoke to the prophet, sorry. He says that you were sold for nothing. And you shall be redeemed without money. Hello, is somebody here? God, during the time of Isaiah, was talking about money. I thought money just came out not long ago. No, money existed in the Old Testament during the time of Isaiah. Now, the Lord told the prophet, tell my people that when I took them, let's go to the verse 4. You will, you will understand better, please. The verse number 4. He said, for that says the Lord God, my people went down at the first into what? Into Egypt to sojourn there. He's talking about what? The slavery route. Okay? And he said, and many years later, signature, the Assyrian oppressed them for nothing. For I deliver you from both Egypt and Assyria. What then can prevent me from delivering you from Babylon? So now, God's own people were in captivity where? In Babylon. Are you here? Now, why God is talking that, what can prevent me from delivering you and still they are there? Now, the scripture in Isaiah is making us to understand the Babylonians having power over them was what? A spiritual transaction. Did you see that? Bring it back to the verse number 3. See it right there. God is telling Isaiah. He said, tell my people you were what? Sold for nothing. So, the Babylonians were having power, control over them. But the Israelites thought that it was just something of slaveryhood. But in the realms of the spirit, it was what? It was a spiritual transaction. I want to open your eyes. One of the things a prophet would do is not only to give you a prophetic word, but to show you spiritual things for you to what? Excel. Let me tell you, anything you go through that becomes or you become a slave to that thing, it means that there is what? A spiritual transaction in connection. Are you here? Now, God said, when I showed you to the powers of Babylon, to the king of Babylon, to the spirit of Babylon, I did not take money. So, I can deliver you any time without what? Paying money. Oh, this is very deep. It's deep. I'm showing you why you have prayed, you have received prophecy about the marriage, you have gotten a dream and still things are not changing because you don't understand what goes on in the spiritual realm. I told you the spiritual realm is a dangerous realm. A spiritual realm is a realm of transaction. Are you here? You can be a child of God. You pray very well. You come to church. But if you don't know the spiritual transaction, you can die in poverty. Now, there are a lot of people that talk about the prophetic. Oh, this nowadays prophet is money, 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 money. They don't know. I'm about to teach you something. I was delivering a lady from the spirit of courtism. When the lady was a baby, the mother brought her into the hand of a fetish. I prayed, Bishop, 30 minutes. The demon said, I'm not going. I became confused. I told the church, I said, hold on. So me being a spiritual person and a prophet, it is easier for me to what? talk to God. And why is I say, hold on, I'm asking God, what is going on? And God said, let me show you something. You think I've given you power? I've given you anointing? You think that the scripture said by the reason of the oil, every yoke will be broken? He said, this one is caused by spiritual transaction. You can't break it only in Jesus' name. You can't break it only loose. There must be a sacrifice in attached. 
And listen to me. God said, let everybody in the house pick up money, lay at the feet of that lady. Within one minute, the demon will disappear. This is not now. I'm talking about my early ministry. I obeyed God. I said, everybody pick up something you have. Put it there. Let the lady stand on. God said, within one minute, that demon will disappear. The church obeyed. They put it there. The lady stand on. The lady could not stand on the money. I told the ushers, put the, the lady on the money. They put the lady there. I'm going. I'm going. Ah, pa. No prayer. Am I, am I helping you? So, you got to come to a place to understand. The prophet is not there to take your money. When God call a seed, or when the prophet is telling you to sow, it means that God has revealed to him that your case is in connection with what? Spiritual stuff. Let me tell you, one of my daughter came to me and said, Papa, this is what is happening to me. I know you have prayed for me several times. I said, this one I know is not prayer, but you are stubborn. That's why I prayed for you. Say, ah, Papa, why? If it's not prayer, why will you pray for me? Be I said, because when I tell you to sow, you will not sow. So I wanted to pray, and when you come back, you will know that it did not work. And when you sow, you will see that it will work. Am I, am I helping somebody here? <laughs> you don't know what is happening. Think about it again. One of the prayerful man of God in the word of God called Tania. The man prayed three times a day. Fast, but still prince of Persia could stop his angel. Listen, when the angel was coming from the realm of God, nobody stopped the angel. The angel was stopped only in the spiritual realm. Now my question is, if God is all-knowing God, when God was sending this angel, didn't God know that the angel would be stopped in the spiritual realm? So why did God send the angel? I'm opening some keys to you. Listen, I, I, I did not come to just prophesy to you. This conference, greater words, you must do great things. Now, listening to this revelation, do you know that when the Holy Spirit brought Jesus on the mountain to fast for 40 days and 40 nights, when he came down, do you know the first thing or the first assignment the Holy Ghost gave him to speak good news to the poor? Not to heal the poor, not to deliver the poor, not to declare the favorable year of the Lord, but to speak what? Good news. Because, listen, where we are is not lack of prayer. It's lack of the word. So when he speaks good news, it will change the mind of the poor. Are you here? I've, I've been watching this conference. So the prophet has been prophesying. You know, but one thing I do everywhere I go. I don't want to prophesy and go home and come back again and the prophecy never came to pass i have to give you an understanding you have to get the revelation are you here do you want to operate in the realm of greater works it's not for pastors it's not for prophet it's for those that are willing to tap on the revelation are you here it's very simple what is greater works? Hello? It's works that nobody on earth can perform. Without what? The spirit of God bringing you in that realm. Jesus took a few loaf of bread and a few fish. And it increased more than over 5,000. This is called greater works. When a blind man's eyes will be full of mud. And Jesus will say, go wash your face. And as the man wash his face, he can see again. It's called greater works. When they lack money to pay temple tax, and Jesus will say, Peter, go fish. 
and open the mouth of the fish is called greater work are you here i was watching apostle Ober and he said something he said rich people don't pray like you do because they don't have they don't disturb god are you here do you know that in life everything is about secret i have come to know something in god i've been prophesying for over 15 years now what i've come to know in life with god huh? you don't do what you want you do what is necessary yeah in life if you do what you want you will stay where you don't want to stay who here goes to work not every time you feel like going to work but because it's necessary to put food on the table you drag your feet are you here who here has a baby sometimes you are deeply asleep and the child will say mama i want to drink milk mama i'm hungry uh, uh, mama mama you are forced to go and feed the child you go with one eye closed one eye open in life if you want to do what you want that is why the bible says that believe in the prophet and you prosper because prophet don't come to pamper you there is difference between a prophet and a pastor are you here a pastor will say i understand you a prophet will say that says the lord a prophet is for what your prophet are you here are you here let's enter into the word of god very quick am i helping somebody good i'm laying down foundation and tomorrow it's going to be super brutal tell somebody super brutal and ask them do you understand do you understand that word good now let's go to the book of john chapter 3 verse 26 i'm teaching you how to operate in the realm of what greater works and after this teaching if you cannot operate in that realm then we have to baptize you in river jordan because there is nothing we can do with you okay. john 3 26 are you here so they came to john and reported to him rabbi the man who was with you on the other side of the jordan there is a part that is cut off but god is good amen and to whom you yourself have born testimony notice here he is baptizing too and everybody is what flocking to him now he's talking about Jesus. They came to report to John. The man you baptized is baptizing too. And everybody is moving towards the man. Continue please. Next verse. Yes. John answered. A man can receive nothing. They, I don't see. They can't claim nothing. He can take unto himself nothing. Except as it has been granted to him from heaven a man must be what content to receive the gift which is given him from heaven there is no other source next verse i hope you are following you yourselves are my witnesses you personally bear me out that i stated i am not the christ the anointed one the messiah but I have only been sent before him in advance of him to be his appointed fair good, his messenger, his announcer. Next verse. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. But the groomsman who stand by and listen to him rejoices greatly and heartily on account of of the bridegroom's voice uh-huh this then is my pleasure and joy and it is now complete next verse he must increase but i must decrease he must grow more prominent i must grow less so the first thing you have to capture if you want to operate in the realm of greatness 
is to learn to decrease so that Christ must increase. Hold on, don't clap. A lot of us, when we, we hear the word, learn to decrease, we think that coming to church and living a holy life. So when they come to their bank account, they want to increase for Christ to decrease. When it comes to their family, they want to increase. For, but it's everywhere. Now, if you cannot decrease when it comes to your money for Christ to increase, then there will not be any financial increase. Even though if I give you 22,000 prophecy about your finance. Are you here? If you don't learn to decrease in the area of your relationship... For Christ to increase, you meet the man. The man said, if you don't let me sleep with you, then I can't marry you. Okay. And you lie down like a little boy. Hey, God, forgive me or it's not me. No. Christ can increase in that relationship. Are you here? When we are talking about the realm of what? Of greatness. The realm of moving as Christ moved, you have to learn to what? Incre I mean, decrease so that Christ must increase. So, for example, God can tell me there is somebody here that I want you to support this church with $5,000. The person will receive the word in the heart. But at that time is the time that the person we want to check Facebook to see what is going on. Because them releasing that 5,000. Oh my God. This is not just a small money. Ah, but I thought that you received a prophecy that God will make you a billionaire. Hello? Christ cannot come through for you. Because you have not learned to what? To decrease. Let me show you a shocking revelation here. Let's go to the book of Matthew 11, 11. The Bible says that John the Baptist, among men, there is nobody greater than him. Do you know why? Because he's the one that tapped on this revelation. He's the one that came to understand the more I decrease, the more Christ increase. That is why among all the great men in the Bible, there is none to be compared to John the Baptist. It was not because John was special than the others. No. God loved them all, but not all of them could walk in the realm of greatness. Are you here? Imagine, in the olden times, prophet must stay in the bush with wild animals, lions and tigers. You see young and handsome Elijah in the bush. John the Baptist must what? Stay far. Eating what? Locusts and honey. What has he done? People were eating all this jollof rice, curry goats, curry chicken. And after they will be And John will keep on sipping on it. Are you here? Tell somebody, power is not powder. Oh, they didn't hear you. Tell them, power is not powder. <laughs> you think that is just, Father, I decree in the name of Jesus, I will marry Nessia. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you joking. Tell your neighbor you're joking. You must learn to decrease in that area. For Christ to increase. I'm a founder. I have a ministry. What apostle is doing is not easy. It takes a man that have come to a place to learn to decrease. If you want to see that it's not easy. Look at you have two children. Every day you fight with them. Look at your head like your father. Look at your nose. Look at this. Look at... Always there's a struggle. Go clean the dishes. Fight. Go do this. Fight. Just your children. Imagine to manage these people. Bishop Carl will tell you leadership is bleedership. 
You were leading and bleeding. I remember Sunday before I came here. The whole Saturday, you, you guys saw me on Zoom. I was not feeling well. I couldn't move. I was knocked out with cold. The whole day. And Apostle Obed called me, come on Zoom. If you saw me, sometimes I go off camera. I come back. I mute. I come back. I was prophesying. You guys were happy. But I was there, couldn't move. You want this power? If it is you, oh God, no, blood of Jesus, not today. <laughs> not today. You must learn to do what? To decrease. If not, you cannot walk in the realm of greatness. You cannot walk in the realm of greater works. Let's read mm -hmm. Matthew 11, 11. This is what they say. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen any greater than John the Baptist. Yet, he who is what? Is what? What is that meaning of least? He who decrease. He who decrease in where? In the kingdom of heaven is greater than John. What does it mean? You can become greater than John the Baptist. If you want to what? You want to come to a place to decrease in every area. Church today, when they don't have children, they are disturbing God. Give me a child. When God gives them the children, they have excuses with the children not to do what God is asking them. Am I talking to somebody? You don't have a job. God, give me a job. You get a job. You have excuse why you don't pay your tithe. Why you don't sacrifice. And you want to increase. You want God to make you great. The kingdom is not like that. Let me tell you, it's not the one that prays that is great. Is the one that understands the revelation to walk in the realm of greater works. Oh, I thought you would slap your hands for Jesus. I know, I know I'm not taking the, the move of Apostle Obey. You're not shouting, but it's okay. It's not every time that you have to shout. Are you here? You got to understand something. Beloved, creation is waiting eagerly. For you to move in that realm. Oh my God. Even yourself, you are frustrated because you are not moving in that realm. Learn to decrease. Some of us, we have million dollars money in our account. Money in our account. When God is speaking, you know that it's you. But you never do it. But one of the things you don't understand because you are spiritually what illiterate. Do you know that sometimes we have something we call bloodline curses, generational curses. These things they are caused by sacrifices. I know men of God that are very anointed. They can prophesy to the point. They can tell you the color of your brazier. But still they have weaknesses, sleeping with women, doing all sorts of things. It's not that they want to do it. It's a spiritual thing. Do you think they have not prayed about it? It's not everything you can pray about it. You should understand the realm of the spirit and how it operates. The church today, we are ignorant. About this realm and all these wicked men and women, they are using the realm to take advantage on us. But I pray for somebody in the name of Jesus. I should get revelation today. No evil power can operate against you, no demonic spirit can operate against you.